I am an ex-newsman, so I'm going to get uh, right to the point. Um, in answer to the question, how are the children? Better. Uh, considerably better, at least in some villages that are striving for student success in this land of 10,000 lakes. And of course, the 1,000 lakes refers to around here in Itasca County. Uh, but first, I want to digress and elaborate a little bit on this idea of uh, villages. Um, oops, look at that thing. <laughs> uh, the African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child was popularized a few years ago. And there was some pushback on this. It's been actually mocked by some who don't understand the phrase or the concept. But I would submit that this idea is true and powerful and universal, and it's a very, very American idea. And it's a Minnesota idea even more so. Children do need their own parents, of course, to take care of them uh, and lead the way but they actually depend on business owners and future employers, other parents, church people, the Rotary Club, all these folks and taxpayers without children to make sure the village continues to be prosperous in, next, in the next generation. So how American is this? A lot of you may be related to some of these folks. This is not far from here. Uh, our Native Americans, you heard earlier, venerated this idea of all community for the children. And folks like these 19th century pioneers built this little solid schoolhouse in the woods and laid the foundation for our successful society here in the upper Midwest. In every single place that American pioneers settled, they set aside public land, they came together to build a schoolhouse, they found good teachers, they got everybody contributing toward educating every single one of the children in their jurisdiction as far as they could. And the good news is that this village spirit is coming alive in new ways across our great land of lakes and woods and prairies. Up in our biggest lake of all, they call it Gitchigumi, uh, in the village of Grand Marais, these villagers got very worried about their remoteness from higher education campuses and they formed a group called Cook County Higher Education. They created an actual place, this building, for their young adults to get the higher education they need through online courses and other innovative strategies. This village enterprise has put valuable post-secondary credentials in the hands of some 500 young adults over a decade who otherwise would not have gotten degrees. This is pretty amazing work for a county of just 5,000 people, which is now a considerably smarter county and employers are going to like that. Now, out south of west of here, in the somewhat larger village of Wilmer, Candy Yohai County, people of all races some years ago got concerned about rising tensions due to a growing Latino population. Now more than 30% of the population in the school enrollment, and it was falling far behind the majority population in achievement and attainment. This village formed something called the West Central Integration Collaborative, focusing on, the, first, the very hard work of, of mutual cultural understanding, cultural, com cultural competency. competency. They, they greatly improved attitudes and relations in the community, but they focused also on student success and retention in the entire re region. They put school success coordinators in every school. They've seen parental attendance at, at, at uh, parental uh, teachers' conferences rise 80%. And the activities of this village were a major reason why Wilmer was raised, named a few uh, years ago an all-American city. Now, uh, east of there, in this very large village of Rochester, home of two great science-based employers, IBM and the Mayo Clinic, this community work is taking many forms, uh, much of it for the large and growing African immigrant population. One great example is the Integrated Science uh, Education Outreach Program, a collaboration between Mayo, Winona State, and Rochester schools. And this effort has been focused uh, specifically on science education. And here are some results. Science fair participation has increased eightfold. Standardized testing in the fifth and eighth grade shows 14 and 33% improvement, respectively, uh, in science proficiency. 
and it's allowed one school to boast that it is the only school in Minnesota where rigorous science excellence, a certain level of science excellence, is actually the norm for that school. Right here in Itasca County, uh, with some of the highest percentages, higher percentages of Native American populations in our state, right here near the beautiful shores of Lake Pokegama, a student success core team, pictured here, has begun organizing this area on a clear pathway to boost achievement and post-secondary attainment. They're developing a very sophisticated, comprehensive model of civic infrastructure for student success. They've joined a national partnership called the Strive Partnership, and I greatly encourage you to check out the Strive Partnership as a model for a community. This model is based on the principle of total community engagement, clear, measurable goals, and rigorous standards, and continuous improvement, and these words are important, from cradle to career. Here's a statistical look at why uh, this village work is more important than ever before. By the end of this decade, we'll need to have about 75% of our young adults equipped with some sort of post-high school credential. Right now, only about half our kids are getting there by that age, and attainment and achievement uh, by kids of color lacks far behind the majority culture. If we don't get there, if we don't capitalize on this enormous reservoir uh, of human talent and brain power in our fast-growing communities of color, our Native American population, our Latinos, our, our immigrants, and our African Americans, we will not be a successful economy. We need to look at this much maligned achievement gap, too often viewed with resignation, as a huge untapped asset and an opportunity. All across, the good news is this, all across our state, our land of 10,000 villa uh, lakes, villagers are beginning to put together roadmaps like this uh, toward a more holistic vision of birth to cradle investment. Much more than just that schoolhouse, before the schoolhouse, after the schoolhouse. Uh, evidence is in on the things that really work, home visiting in infancy, uh, high quality early childhood education, intensive tutoring and mentoring in early grades, post-secondary preparation beginning in middle grades, more intensive uh, tutoring and mentoring and counseling in later grades, and lowering costs and barriers to, to both vocational and to four-year degrees. In five words, this great new and old idea is total village, cradle to career. Our economy is changing rapidly, and the complexion of our villages is changing to match the complexion of the global village. This is a good and happy thing, but only if we hold on to this great idea of everybody in the village on board for all the kids. Historians and economists are in our agreement that this is what made, has made our land of lakes a better place to live. We all need to embrace this village spirit, get involved individually from cradle to career in, in Things like tutoring, pushing for this measurable student improvement, finding the public and private and nonprofit money and resources it takes to keep all our children above average in this mythical land of Lake Wobegon. This is the way to economic growth and harmony and justice, too. Thank you, Tedsters. I love your idea machine, and it's great to be part of it.